cool. Now I can turn on some copyrighted music and pate. Mmm. Love a good pate. Come on. Good evening, good day, good night, good morning, good afternoon. Um, I think that covers most of it. Wherever you are in this world crazy planet of ours. Today we're going to be refurbishing the front hub assembly. This is my old set. And this is my new set. I'm switching out entire hub assemblies because there's two different types. Thank you, Ford, for screwing it up yet again in the 80s. Somewhere between 84, 85, or 86, they switched to this newer style and got rid of this older style. The difference between the new style and the old style is how the rim centers itself onto this hub, right? The wheel's got to be pretty nice and center. The older style up to 84, 85, I think it was 85 when they switched it over, was a stud piloted or a lug nut piloted wheel, meaning that the lug in conjunction with the stud and the nut here, it would center the wheel. Notice this is a flat surface. The newer style has a lip here because this is a hub piloted wheel, meaning the hub itself centers the wheel and the studs and the lug nuts simply keep everything bolted down tight. Because there's two different designs here, I have to run two separate rims. <laughs> so why am I upgrading this? Well, a bit of a spoiler alert. When we get into the rear brakes, one of my outer bearings are actually spun on the hub, meaning the hub is no good. I can't find another set of hubs, rear hubs, from the old style. Uh, I had to buy a U-set on eBay, and they're, <laughs> they're don't, they don't look all that great either. However, they are the new style, so we're going to switch all of my old styles with the new styles because if I did not, if I had the new style in the back, which I have to, but if I kept the old style up in the front, that means I have to carry two separate spare tires for the truck, one that interfaces with this and the newer updated rim that interfaces with this. <laughs> now that might be complicated to you guys that may have not made any sense but um, basically I only want to carry one spare tire so why not swap them all over so let's go ahead and start refurbishing our front hubs was that confusing enough for everybody Woo! oh I need to lay off the caffeine right Next thing will be our bearings. There we go. Now there's a very specific reason why I'm putting in the solvent tank. Number one, obviously clear the grease. However, stage two of cleaning after the solvent tank is the real reason why I want to get this thing nice and dry. What? This is too boring for you guys. Alright, well, you get the idea. I'm rinsing out all the grease. Gonna air dry this thing out. And then, we shall move on with stage two of the cleaning process. We'll be right back in about two seconds. So you can do this too. You don't need a fancy puller. Take your punch, back it up, and hit the back of the shoulder of the bearing here and I'm gonna hit it up here up to high and off to the side here and off to the side here every time that should walk it out evenly
There you go. And same thing with the other side. has been completely disassembled except for the roll pin. We're not going to worry about that. Yes, I did check to make sure the lug studs would not fall through my grate. <laughs> they won't, but just barely. All right, let's see how good these rotors clean up. These are the used good set. They came off the newer hub style. So the rotors cleaned up pretty good. Uh, no big grooves I can find in either one. I didn't spend the time on sandblasting the rotors too much because they're just going to get hot and dirty again. The main deal was cleaning the rotor area and the mating surfaces as well. So for <laughs> free rotors, yeah, we'll uh, take them and hopefully they're not warped. <laughs> we'll find out soon enough. They're easy enough to take on and off again. It'll be all right. So I think we're officially ready to start the rebuild process on the hubs. And to start the rebuild process, I'm going to start by running a thread chaser, checking all the threads, making sure they're all clean. 
So while I'll do that, I'm going to do a jump cut when I'm all done with it, and we'll blow these holes out of all the debris that might possibly be in there. And uh, see what the next stage of the process is. If you guys are wondering, ooh, if you guys are wondering, after the sandblaster, yes, I blasted all the hubs down, including mounting holes and inside of here as well. So we don't have to worry about any grits of sands coming in and uh, grinding our bearings to powder. I can't show you everything because you guys would be so boring and it'd be a six hour long process. <laughs> So, um, by the way, clean your, th your thread, your thread chaser or your taps every two turns. I'm not, but it's going in smoothly enough. I'm not too worried about it. So, so we will see you guys in a few seconds. Cool. Now I can turn on some copyrighted music and pate. Mmm. Love a good pate. Come on. All right, I'm gonna blow each every one out. Yes, I couldn't help. I painted the hubs. <laughs> you see, I blast something that big. I just can't help but spray it with something. Maybe in a vain attempt for the rim not to glue itself to the hub again. I don't know. We'll see how long it lasts, but I like it. And of course, we have our lovely assorted Timken seals and bearings. Nope, <laughs> it's the other size. Gosh darn it. Ah! I don't know where the driver for this thing went, so I gotta use a center punch, which will work. Such so disorganized chaos in here. Hey, sounds good to me. This would be the bigger size. Bloop, right in like that. Just a bloopity bloop. So I gotta go find a driver for that. Hang on. Oh, well, I don't have quite a big enough driver for that. This one will work. But instead of using it correctly and pulling it through, I'm just going to smash on it. It'll be fine. All right. Now, before we go any further, on this side, we can put the inner bearing and the seal on there. But let's first up fill up both chambers on both rotors of grease, right in this area. Oh, yeah. There's a lovely red go go juice. Come on. Right, how am I going to applicate this being half clean? Easy. It's not going to be. Um. Make sure there's no metal shards or sand left over there. Shouldn't be, but... Let's get down and messy here. Think of this cavity as a reservoir for your oil. I always want to keep it... some oil in the tank. There we go. Eh. Leave a little bit more on that side. Okay. That should be good enough. Hello. We don't live in a trawler. Knock it off. Time to pack my bearing. Just kick it old school style. Just get it in there and just start working it in. Try to squeeze that stuff in there. 
I do like that red. That's a pretty red. Eh, something like that. I have one of those... I used to have one of those grease deals where you seal it around it and it comes squirting out of the rollers, but I think that would make just as big, if not of a bigger mess. So, I'm going to make a mess anyways. I'll just do it by hand, eh? Rotate that a little bit. Make thing is try to shove it in that side and that side as well. Okay, I think we're doing a fair job. A little twisty twist. There we go. Oh, perfect. Incorporate all that lovely grease up in there. Whoa! Easy. <laughs> Camera almost fell down. <laughs> uh, okay. And then you just go bloop. Like that. Oh, will you look at that mess? Oh, I will not stand for this. Ooh. Well, I've made it right nasty. Now it's time for some seals. Lovely. Seal goes this way. I fortunately, <laughs> with all of my pullers and bearing extractor kits, I've got one pretty much that fits almost anything, really. So we're lucky to have that here. Oh, a little bit more. On that side. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. I like it. What a beautiful white paint job. Yeah, white is about the worst color you can have in automotive business. Or at least when you're mechanicking, fixing them. Here's a fun little rambling. 30 second story, I hope. When I went to college, got my degree in auto tech I had a instructor who before was an instructor at said college he used to work at a dealership and he was saying when he was a tech at the dealership they always wore white shirts uh, but we also asked him at the same time, well, didn't you get all dirty? Because, um, you know, fixing cars tends to um, get quite grimy and greasy. And he says, well, you found ways to keep yourself clean. It was more of a mythology or methodology uh, that you had to follow. And uh, he said, you can do it. <laughs> But uh, basically, he led on. It wasn't for the faint of heart. It wasn't. It wasn't easy at all to keep a nice white uh, service uh, technician shirt on while wrenching on cars. <laughs> Anyways, I thought that was a pretty fun, pretty fun ordeal that he had to go through. Pretty funny for me, at least, because I never had to. <laughs> so, anyways, it's possible. It's never gonna happen on this channel. <laughs> Can you form them at once? I don't think so. We'll do three at once. <laughs> really? Okay. Let me just stand around here. Right here. Really? Back to the air hammer. Really? We got the right ones. Well, we had a no-go situation. I tried to pull it up with the lug nut, and uh, <laughs> this was actually going to snap off, and it's still not sunken in all the way. So. Either the wrong size 
or those are pieces of junk. I'm leaning towards pieces of junk, considering where a lot of this stuff is made nowadays. So, we'll just go ahead and use our old studs. I'll take these two out. I will chase thread all of these, and we'll just use the old ones, I guess. Lovely. You know, I used to do this on swamp buggies, replacing the lug studs, but we had a 30 ton electric hydraulic press that would just do this in the two seconds. So, jump cut, why? Well, you get the idea. Putting lug studs in. How crazy is that? With a gummed up paint job now. Oh well. So we'll be right back. Well, <clears throat> easy with the light there, dude. Probably gotta start them first, eh? Picky, picky, picky. Clean all this nasty stuff off. I'm almost at brake clear. I'm gonna have to go to the store. Typical. It's always how it works. This right here, where are you guys? This right here is the mating surface for the seal. So you do wanna take some time and clean it up. Fortunately, mine's not rusted out. Just got some surface debris on it. Oh yeah. <laughs> that will most definitely suffice. So now, let's get it dirty again. <sighs> Excellent. I gotta take my outboard bearing and grease it up. Make sure you guys buy a lot of shop towels and uh, gloves. <laughs> Mine has got a slight spur on it. I don't know. <laughs> this is supposed to be easy. Yep, we got two different styles here. 
not necessarily Ford's problem, cars will always change, is this really stinks when you're dealing with a change over years, <laughs> what curveballs it can throw you. <sighs> Apparently this one is the later, this one is the earlier flavor. Okie dokie. Oh, look at that, that just one goes right on. <laughs> the axle nut on. We should now torque this down. Two wheel drive units only. 22 to 25 foot pounds as you are rotating the hub assembly. Okay. This might take a hot minute to get it buttoned up here. It goes okay. Rotating it the way it normally is supposed to go. I didn't like that. Let's try that again. There we go. The last part of getting this axle nut to seat is you back it off one eighth of a turn. That's specific to this Ford. So eighth of an inch or eighth of a turn, which is about 45 degrees. Right about there. All right. Put this little guy in here. Put our cotter pin in, maybe. Like that. We are pretty much good to go. The last bit. This is your dust cap. Put some grease in there so there's dust will be contained, right? There we are. Need something to thunk it with. Okay. I wanted to see how white these hubs are. I wanted to spray the dust cap at the very end as well. Just to see how much that front uh, wheel might shine in the center. Break up the monotony of uh, it being ugly looking going down the road. I don't know what it's going to look like, but... So we want to preserve the whiteness in here just to make it pop a little bit in the center of the hub. You know what I'm saying? No? Alright, well. For the two people that are left watching. We're gonna find out at the end. So, um, yeah, just sit in, s sit down, and uh, grab yourself something to eat right quick, and I'll get this cleaned up and go to the other side and put that hub on and uh, continue on there forth thereof. We're getting closer to the end. <laughs> Not getting this truck going, but oh, well, that's a little bit more tighty. There, excellent. All right, let's knock that other hub out right quick. Actually, changing my mind, I'm going to paint it right now. Nice white hub that matches the rest of the paint on the pickup. I don't know how well pronounced it'll be, but um, yeah, that should be all right. All right, let's go ahead and put that other hub on. Now, some may say, okay, we'll do the jump cut, we'll do the other side right quick, but Let's do this together. We're going to do it again for the two people that are still watching. You make the algorithm happy. <laughs> Go ahead and clean off our spindle, of course. We've got some chunkies and some muckies in here. Well, spindle looks good. No spun bearings, it looks like, on here. Evidence of a spun bearing. Oh, yes. Just 
stay. You guys won't be able to see this very well because some idiot decided to paint the hubs white and is throwing the whole balance off the camera. Go ahead and pack our bearing here right quick. Nut. All right, again, 25 foot pounds on the old torque wrench. Oof. It's like somebody bumped into its dust boot and dust you a little bit. foot pounds as we are rotating in the normal direction. What's wrong with my transmission here? That will do a simple snug up. There we go. Okay. Now let's try this. Now it's loading up. It's about time. Alright. Now I wasn't doing it. Not happy with that. Redo. Do that again. There we go, I'm much happier with that. Now we back off one eighth of a turn. Well, that's, that's righty tidy. You can go lefty loosies. So, that's about right there. So I'll be right about, right about there. All right. Spindle nut has been set. Or I should say spindle or should say load, what should I say, I quit? Wheel bearing preload has been set. Yeah, there you go. There we go, perfect. Yes, please, and thank you. Oh, now you guys can see it. <laughs> How's that? Now you can see what I'm doing. Get rid of that white balance there. Whatever the camera does, it sees white. What is that? Turn the f-stops down? Or just turn the f-stops up? Uh, I don't know. It turns... Get off the white, it turns... It opens the iris up more, so that would be a smaller f-stop. Oh, I know I'm speaking. 
technically, uh, well, half speaking gibberish. There, how's that? Yeah, that looks all right. Safety pin in, or safety caught a pin in place. Earl in the old dust cap. Just a little bit more as a reservoir, just in case. Now you might be saying to yourself, all right, finally, he's done with the episode. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Well, first of all, I have to clean these rotors up. Or rather, this hub up. Rub off half the paint in the process, but oh well. We have to uh, put on our... Uh, we have to do one more thing. Twice. Then we'll call it an episode. Or if you guys want to call it an episode now, but... Come on, two people have ridden with me this far in this boring episode. They're with me till the very end. I know they are. Bless them. Show a quick wipey wipe. I'll transition you guys to the final phase of the front end brake slash hub rebuild upgrade assembly thing. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> We'll see you guys in two seconds. Now I have already loosened these up about a month ago just to make sure I didn't have to do any plumbing when the engine was out. In case these ones didn't, these fittings didn't want to come off, but they did break loose, so this will be uneventful. <laughs> Trick is doing as fast as I can off the reservoir draining out and having to worry about getting air into that. So this will be interesting. Okay. This view would be the inside of it. Go ahead and disconnect our line now. I'm going to try to cap this off as quickly as I can so I don't lose my brake fluid from the reservoir. It'll slow the bleeding down quite a lot. Oops, I just dropped it. So now I'll remove the clip that holds onto the brake hose. Pry this guy up here, that first tab, you pry it up. You pry it up, you pry it up, and then you rotate it, and then shall we push it off in theory. By prying on the inner side of it, maybe. There it goes. And there you go. And a little bit more. I'll show you the clip here. There we go. And the clip's off. I'll show you guys what that is. So this is the brake hose clip. It holds the rubber piece on to the chassis. Again, all you gotta do is simply bend this guy first, and then push here and here. Push it this way with the clip, because that's the exit point. Push on that clip and it, uh, it removes itself. Not terribly, terribly complicated, but they can be a little bit tricky sometimes. <laughs> Get yourself a very long screwdriver or pry bar from up top definitely helps. You can probably get it from down below, but my bull knows it's easier just to get it from the top. And then simply pull the old rubber hose out like that. So old caliper, new caliper, or reman technically. I had thought about rebuilding my old set, but luck would have it, this one's probably junk. <laughs> I'll keep it in case I want to rebuild it someday, perhaps. I don't know. I might just end up pitching it. But with the luck I've been having, <laughs> chances are this thing's junk. On my particular style, we have a copper washer on both sides. On this side. As well as this side. So when you're taking your stuff apart, pay attention. Bit of a rinsey rinse. Uh oh, might be out. Oh, there it goes. Let's flush that bolt out. That old crusty stuff out of there. 
a quick spurts, spurts, quick spritz, I guess. There we go. Reusable. We have brand new washers, of course. And the other crush washer goes on the other side, like Leslie. Oops. Great. So now, one crush washer there. That gets inserted this way. Other crush washer goes over here. And then the geese start honking. I got ravens saying things to me, and now it's freaking geese. It's brilliant. What a time to be alive. All right, where's my wrench? Yeah, that's torque to specs. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put this bad boy back on now. Note on uh, this particular Ford. There's a smooth part right here on the brake hose. It goes in right there. This does not just simply go in. It goes on only one way, like that. Put this little humdinger right back on. Installation's easier. Just give it a good thwack. What that say? What that say? I'm gonna do the other side right quick, off camera. I'm gonna turn the sun back on so I don't have to wave this light around anymore. And we'll be back. In two seconds, again. Hindsight 2020 before hooking up my calipers uh, up to the truck, I really should have loaded the calipers up first with the brake pads, but I didn't. So yeah, <laughs> whatever, we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Our brake pads of choice will be Stop by Bendix. Not affiliated, sponsored, or endorsed in any way, shape, or form on map. All right, little hole here, big hole here. Big gap opening goes on top of the caliper. Like lastly. All right, again, the big one goes on top. So it'll be that way. I guess. Shut aside like that, Shay. Stay, 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 no, stay. I should have done this with, this, with it off because it would have held, but oh well. Where's the spring? Where's the springy? Springy, springy. Um, it was just here. It did. Oh, oh. See, I need to get my. Uh, I need to figure myself up before I hit the record button. Cause now I got to edit. There it is. Now I got to edit all this out. Right. See here. Hooks in through here and here. Tabs are folded down on the spring. There we go. Now we're loaded up. Well, we were having, you didn't push on it. You imbecile. Wow, okay. Sure, it's that easy. <laughs> I forgot to clean my rotors up. I got a little bit of grease on them when I was doing the hub, so I gotta wipe the uh, wipe the rotor surface down with brake cleaner. So I'll just take care of that right quick. Let us see now if we can gently persuade. Yeah, brake coppers are always fun when they got new pads on. Oh, there we go. That's not bad. This is where the fun begins. Trying to jam all this up in here. Oh yeah, this is gonna take a hot second. Oh, 
Okay. more Ooh, a little too far <laughs> what I really like about these pads is they've got a little coating here that puts a non-directional finish on here Kind of like that feature actually not really necessary in our case because the uh, rotors are slightly used but nevertheless i do like that feature which yeah mm -hmm. yeah no nay 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 okay, come on come on stop messing about we got place to go people to see and problems to cause <laughs> All right, clip, 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 clip. Pivoting. Okay, clamps down there. Uh, yeah, sure, why not? There we go, okay. Looks all right. Heave ho, and away we go. No, no, we're not going to All right. Um, like that. Yeah. Oh, it's so much fun getting these started. Okay, hold on. Ring like that. Out. And down like that. Yeah, right, 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 right. No, you're supposed to... Yes, I know I'm using my framing hammer, just ah, work with me, people. It's what I got. There's a view I wanted to show you guys. Uh, about center. That's kind of nice because I'm actually staring at the camera. Giving me a mirror image, actually. It's actually quite nice. It's just backwards. Just like me. Oh yes. Right, where's my wrench? All right. Almost finished, there's one little detail we have to do. We're not gonna bleed the brakes on this episode. You don't always should, but I have to do the rear brakes too. There's air pockets everywhere in the system. We'll bleed that later. We are gonna swap out the bleeders with speedy bleeders. What these are, I don't know if you guys have ever seen them. Uh, it's basically a bleed screw, but the good thing about these is they got a one-way check valve. So you and you alone can bleed your own brakes. You push on the pedal, Pressure and air comes out, as should be with a traditional method. That's the best method, in my opinion. But as soon as you stop pumping the brakes, that check valve instantly closes. So think of this as just a one-way check valve to get all the bad air and junk out of there and keep the brake fluid from traveling back into the system. It's, it's really great. I highly recommend them. They go by many different names, speed bleeders, speedy bleeders, and a whole bunch of different. A lot of people make them. Oof. So if you're kept, kept keeping your rig for a long time, or you know someone who might appreciate them, put them on. Probably gonna leave the speedy. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this bleeder out for a few while it uh, fills up. There we go. Just want to get topped off. I've got to order a lot of, I got to order a fair amount of parts in the back. I didn't want to it sit outside and start gathering moisture.
All right. There we go. All right. Now I know that brakes are not the most coolest thing in the world. And I know my videos really don't perform that well when I do brakes. So you know what we do? We're gonna double down and do the rear brakes in the next couple episodes on this pickup. But in the meantime, check out my boy Soda George. He has got another project car for you all to watch. So please go check him out. I'm gonna to start to work on the teardown on the rear axle for the brake assembly on the service unit. So in the meantime, Thank you for watching. Behave yourselves. Happy New Year's. And we'll see you guys at some point. <laughs>